Um, yeah, I was asked to uh, present a few debugging tools. Um, it was not to be the uh, Rui debugger, I know it's, uh, it's had for like three years now. I think I started a bit over uh, three years ago. And uh, nowadays the knee has mostly taken over and it slowly starts to mature to a, to a state where it can actually be used. Um, and the bugger, uh, the GUI debugger is uh, one thing that Then um, there's, there are other debugging tools that may be less known. Um, profiling is, is one of those, and um, the more or less experimental one is <coughs> scheduling uh, debugging uh, with a scheduling recorder and debug analyzer. I want to say something about those two. I originally planned to uh, I considered um, talking about kernel debugging too, but uh, I didn't decide to answer it. There's a wide book article about it um, on the internet, um, written by myself. <laughs> it's yeah, it takes an actually uh, an actual problem we had uh, at that time. It's already like three or four years old. This article, and uh, it takes an um, actually hands-on um, problem we had uh, at that time and debugs it and uh, demonstrates all the the features that can be used uh, in the kernel debugger to also use uh, to also debug uh, user land uh, applications. And, uh, I don't know if I recall what kind of problem it was at that time, but it uh, shows uh, the kernel tracing feature we had uh, uh, implemented at that time. And it should still be uh, pretty much accurate. Maybe a few things have changed a bit, but it should be, should be okay with that article. So if you're interested in kernel debugging and how, how it can also be applied to, to user land, uh, to debug user land applications, and that would be an article to put in the yeah, but today it's only user tools. I will also try to explain the backgrounds, how they work, and uh, how they are implemented. But um, yeah, not too much of it. Okay, let's start with um, debugger. It's a graphical debugger with a nice uh, graphical UI. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to play, uh, replace uh, GDB, um, which we have for like, we have had for like, uh, Six or seven years, or even longer, I don't know. But it's, uh, GDB is, uh, only has a common line interface, and it's a little bit hard to um, use for people who haven't used it before and uh, aren't really familiar with it because you really have to know the commands to use or what commands you can use to uh, achieve certain things. And uh, it also has a little bit of help, but uh, well, you. Uh, it really lists a lot of lots of topics and lots of commands, and it's hard to uh, really find the code if you haven't used it before. So uh, the, the GUI debugger is something that, that should be very easy to use. I, I will demonstrate it a bit uh, in a few seconds, um, and it's fairly intuitively usable. And for anyone who has used the uh, GUI debugger, it's pretty simple. Um, the only thing that one, one should uh, keep in mind is to compile the <coughs> source code with uh, the magic key option. So uh, debug info is uh, generated for um, for the executable, and uh, uh, the debugger and also GDB of course uh, use both uh, uh, this debug information and um, yeah allow you uh, allow you to show variables and uh, some such uh, on that basis. <laughs> Later. Uh, yeah, let's start with the demonstration. Mm. You can start um, the debugger just by starting the debugger. <laughs> and if you start it without uh, any parameters, you'll, you'll get the Teams window where you see all running uh, applications, or uh, all running Teams. Okay. <coughs> and by just clicking on uh, the start. <coughs> Victim, which will be style edit. And once it started, it appears in the Teams window. And once you double click it, it, it starts um, a debugging window for this team. 
And just to give you know, an, an overview for you, we have a few uh, tabs here. One shows the result of uh, this application. One tab shows the, um, the images, that is um, the executable, the, all libraries that have been loaded, and, and uh, um, all add-ons that have been loaded by this process. There's quite a few already. You know, see the type of edit executable, the D, the tracker, and so on. You can select one and uh, get an overview of all the functions um, that are uh, defined in this uh, image. Um, you can also select those and get, an, yeah, get a listing of the, the function. In this case, we have um, uh, attached it to style ed editors, uh, which doesn't uh, has not been compiled with debug information, so you uh, only see the a disassembly of the function that is the focus function. <coughs> um, yeah, the final uh, tab is breakpoints. Uh, we are now, we don't have any defined breakpoints, so just by uh, clicking here, and you see the uh, breakpoints appear. The debugger will stop at those breakpoints. So we will delete them for now. That is it, that was it. Um, Yeah, Once, uh, back in the threads, we can select the thread, debug this thread, and then the uh, thread is stopped in the kernel. And we see um, the stack trace for, for this thread. And currently, the, um, this uh, thread is in the, uh, in the syscall, in the port buffer size for the function. And you see the whole stack trace, where, where it comes from. Obviously, it comes from Bluebird, it's the application thread, so it is indeed uh, in the application run and uh, waits for uh, messages on the board. <coughs> and you can click any stack trace and, and uh, see the perspective um, <coughs> listed here. Uh, right beside this is a, a view with variables and registers, and in this case, I don't see anything because you don't see anything. You already see a, a bug I, uh, I noticed recently. Um, the switching between the stack trace is a little slow, and uh, I will demonstrate a short demonstration uh, what we can do with profiler to profile the situation. <coughs> But uh, here the register view and for the top uh, stack frame shows all the registers for the um, stack, trace, uh, stack um, frames below that you, you can see all the registers because the debug information is But anyway, that, that's not so interesting for a team without debug info, so I will kill it and start, start debugging uh, a program that has been compiled with uh, debug information at this Uh, to 
continuous um, or single step it. Yeah, usually three single step options to step over the current um, um, instruction uh, that stays in the function as well. Uh, so you can step into the current expression that means you actually enter this function and you can step out of it to get back to the um, previous function. I've already uh, set a few trade records here. Demonstrate this running. Um, stop somewhere. Yeah, right. And you can um, also disable breakpoints to temporarily disable them and still keep them. Or you can remove them completely. completely. Okay, these are somewhat more easier <coughs> functions. I'm going to stop now. Um, you see the variables view, we are here in the main window uh, structure of, uh, of the debug analyzer now. And you see all the local variables listed in the this function. Um, obviously, at the this pointer for, uh, for this object, you can uh, drill down into the, um, into the variables. Object has a, has a model model variable which in turn is it referenceable and has several more um, right. uh, memories. And it um, just uh, this uh, usual uh, the structure, uh, the members of the structures um, you can see for uh, For primitive types, uh, for primitive types, the value is shown. I don't know what this is. Uh, um, you can change the format of the, of the display. Uh, you can also inspect um, the variable or the memory location of the variable. Um, the inspector view uh, needs to. Uh, now you see the, uh, the memory at uh, that location can look at it. Yeah, yes, if you have a few more options, you can switch to the different grouping of the, the display. You can switch to any mess and say with the last text. It's a very regular uh, feature for um, debugger. I think pretty much any. Yeah, I think that covers the basics pretty much. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of features are still missing in debugger. It's, it's a fairly basic uh, debugger. Sometimes have a uh, have a variable of a type, here. Uh, and that variable really has a different type, a more specific type. Like you have a void pointer, that's actually a uh, constant uh, character pointer. So you really want to see the string, and you just see the pointer. And type casting would allow to cast it into different types or into subclasses or whatever. When he has started working on it, I don't know what the state it is, so or anything. It's almost there, but not quite. <laughs> almost there, okay. <laughs> that was